Hey everyone, um, this is going to be a tutorial video for how to play Storybook Brawl. I tried to make it um, focused on the game while also explaining how auto battlers function. Uh, I realized that I didn't do a proper introduction because I kind of hopped out of the game while I was in the stream and then went straight into explaining and didn't do an intro portion for the video that I'm about to be releasing. Uh, instead of going back and filming it um, an intro with a different outfit on a different day. I'm just doing a little voiceover clip with a little segment of the gameplay as you can see behind. Uh, it will hop back in at the beginning where I explain the game and hop in and take my time actually teaching you what's going on um, so that you aren't completely overwhelmed by things like what you see behind me at this time. Anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions or if I missed anything feel free to leave information in the comments. Um, not to be one of those YouTube peddlers, but I would greatly appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed. It does help the algorithm and helps more people see my videos. Um, even if you just leave random comments of you know, funny train of thoughts or jokes of the day, anything like that, it does boost visibility. Uh, whether you take the time or not, thanks for stopping in, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, based on what I'm just about to go into. I did rank up from that, though, because I was in top four. Top four is a win, just like a lot of other auto battlers. Um, so this right here is just kind of your experience tracker. I don't know how much of an elo there is in this game right now, if any, because, as mentioned, it's early access. Uh, crowns are something that display based on how many times you've gotten first place, um, and that's specifically in real games, not practice games. Uh, so as you can see here, I have gotten first place six times. It does not reflect how often you've gotten a win, which is top four though. Um, you can actually go through and look at the different heroes and you can actually sort by own. So if I go to owned and go to heroes, uh, or I was already on heroes, uh, these are the characters I actually own. That means that, um, even if they display on the se second two cards, in the uh, layout with, that you were presented, I would be able to claim them without spending resources because I have already spent resources for them. Uh, of note, I did not purchase all of these characters. There's a handful of characters everyone starts with and everyone owns. And then I have uh, unlocked a small handful of additional characters. So we're gonna hop into a practice game. Last time I checked, practice games do not give you a time limit uh, because everyone else is a bot. So in this particular game, uh, I'm obviously not playing these two because I do not have the currency to unlock them, even if I wanted to. So my options are the fates. This is your upgrade characters have plus five, plus five. Since I'm going to be running this as an um, explanation video, sorry if you just heard me explain it, uh, but I'm going to re-explain so that this video can stand alone as an explanation video. Um, upgrade characters um, is a term used for characters that you have completed a three of a kind of, or a special mechanic called questing, which will also upgrade your character. Uh, Celestial Tiger has a special ability that doubles the ability of your level two and level three treasures. Level two treasures are typically pretty weak, but level three treasures have some very good things. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the Celestial Tiger, though the Fates is also a fairly strong uh, unit if you are able to get sets. So this auto battler plays very similar to Hearthstone Battlegrounds, if you are familiar with that, and that you have an amount of money uh, and you buy cards from the center uh, shop and you gain them and put them into your battlefield and then randomly attack people's things and see how it goes. Uh, normally there's a timer here, just like any other auto battler. The only reason there's not a timer is I am on, in a bot game to make explaining this to you something that I can actually do because I hopped into a game, tried to explain and realized that I was very scatterbrained and uh, repeating myself and missing details because I was trying to take my turns and not throw the match while I was explaining. Um, anyways, the shop will always have a number of units, uh, which I believe scales up as people level specifically, as well as a spell. And typically you can only cast one spell a turn. Uh, there are ways of getting extra spells, either through a spell saying so or other special effects, but you can cast a spell a turn normally. And uh, when you do cast a spell, it goes down right here next to your portrait. It's kind of like your spell book to show that you've cast the spell and what it does. Um, 
In this case, what it does is it discounts everything in the shop by one. The problem is I only have two money right now, so I could buy this, but I wouldn't have a unit. I could also save this so that I could buy more units next turn, but the only time I really um, will lock for a shrink spell this early in the game is if the unit that sells for two gold instead of one gold is down, because then you basically can buy the entire shop the following turn. You buy something, you lock, you play your shrink spell, you buy the discount guy, you sell him, and then you... Um, and then you buy the rest of the shop, just regardless of what it is. And normally, it's a good enough tempo play that I'll do it. Uh, I also don't quite care enough about this being a pair. Actually, you know what? I'm going to lock for this pair, even though I normally wouldn't because of who I'm playing, because the level 2 treasure is a little bit better than what it normally would be. Notably, level 2 treasures aren't very strong in this game. Um, before I click this brawl button and go into the first round of combat, let me just explain a little bit more about the basic mechanics of this game, and then I'll kind of explain abilities as they pop up, and hopefully we'll, we will see all of them. Um, we should be able to, though, since I have all the time in the world. So, um, in this game, everyone starts at level 2, and with 2 gold. Uh, that gold will increase by 1 gold around until you hit 12 gold. At 12 gold, uh... Players will no longer gain extra gold per round. Uh, there are still ways of accumulating extra gold through creature effects and treasures and such. Uh, so you can have more than 12 gold. It will tell you, you know, like 20 out of 12 if you, that were to happen to you. But the game will never personally issue more than 12 gold to you just for you playing. Um, the cost of these units, by the way, unlike Hearthstone Battlegrounds, are actually reflective of their level. Because I'm a level 2, the only things that will show in the shop are level 2 monsters um, and level 2 and lower spells. Spells notably can be lower than level 2, but units are never lower than level 2 with the exception of things like reducing their costs, such as this, which functionally makes them look like they're a different level. They would still pair up as if they were level 2s, though. So if I were to get three tinies... Uh, but I discounted my tinies, they would still count as level 2s while getting 3 of them. On that note, when you get a 3 of a kind in this game, your units merge together and become a better version of that unit, and as well as that, you discover a treasure equal to the level of that unit. Uh, as I've noted, level 2 treasures normally aren't super strong, but we are early in the game, and my character doubles the effect of level 2 treasures, which makes them keep up a little bit better. Um, but typically speaking the higher level your treasures are the better there are a few exceptions like if you really want to go a spell build your really important treasures are all level three treasures uh because there's a treasure that lets you um get discounts on all of your tre uh, on all of your spells and there's a treasure that makes it to where if you cast a spell directly on a unit uh you can cast another spell and it will automatically refresh a spell to your shop and so as you imagine, if you're getting discounts on your spells and you can potentially recast spells and just roll away the ones you can't recast, you can get a lot more casts out of it. Um, but that is a specific example. Most of the time, your treasures at higher levels, level 5 and 6 treasures, are much more game-winning than level 2 and 3 treasures. Um, you can hypothetically obtain treasures as high as level 7. Players do not exceed level 6, and units do not exceed level 6, but there are uh, there is a player uh, character effect that can make treasures bigger, and there are a couple of treasures that can make the following treasure you get a better treasure. Um, if you get a level 7 treasure, um, they often are just these incredibly game-winning effects, but uh, the one time it's happened to me, it was also a kind of one more effect, so it was very far ahead. Uh, just for, for record... Um, um, the treasure I took gave plus five, plus five to everything I have, um, and made it to where whoever wins that lobby got an extra 100 Stardust, which is the in-game currency to unlock things. Um, and I was already very far ahead, so I took that one. The other two treasures, I don't remember specifically what they do, but I will note that I thought both of them were functionally stronger than plus, plus, plus five, plus five to all your units, so just for a sense of scale, um at least of the three treasures I've seen, the weakest thing in there was plus five, plus five to everything you have. Um, there are, um, so back kind of on card identities and how they function really quickly. Um, oh, hold on. Game mechanics, because I, I explained the gold. Uh, in this game, unlike Hearthstone Battlegrounds, you gain experience every round automatically. You get one experience each round, and every three experience, you level up. 
So as the game is just designed, every three rounds of play, everyone in the lobby will go up a level until you are level six. There are spells and units that can get you extra experience. Uh, the spells tend to be very expensive, low impact spells because experience is so powerful. You have to kind of set yourself behind in the round in order for um, for that experience to be obtained. And so it's a little bit high risk, high reward. Uh, the, the jingle in the background of the music was getting a bit old to me, which is why I paused awkwardly for a second there. I decided to kind of just turn off that music for now. Uh, I'll turn it back up once I'm done speaking on the major aspects. But um, it was distracting me, in the moment at least. Um, it normally doesn't bother me too badly, though. I just realized when you're just talking and not playing, it's more noticeable, at least for me. So anyways, um, hypothetically speaking, in three rounds I'll be level three, in three more I'll be level four, three more five, and then three more six, and that kind of gives you an idea of like the pacing of the game. Um, obviously, it is possible to lose earlier in the game. Um, and on that note, let me kind of explain the damage formula for this game. It is also different than Hearthstone Battlegrounds. And for those of you who don't know anything about auto battlers, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to try to make sure this explanation makes sense for you as well. I'm just referring to Battlegrounds a lot because it is the most similar auto battler that I have personally experienced and to the best of my knowledge on the market. Um, so damage in this game is determined by the number of units you have plus your level at the time that your opponent has lost the combat. Uh, obviously, if no one has units in play, that is a draw, not a loss for either player. But hypothetically, if I were fighting someone right now, and at the end of the, the combat, I had this unit remaining, I would do one damage from this unit remaining, and I would do two damage from my level. Um, the level of your units do not matter for damage. However, if your unit is upgraded, which is through tripling or through questing, which I'll get into when we see a quest unit, um... Upgraded units that are still alive at the end do three damage apiece, which means the absolute most damage you can do in this game without anything that says you do extra damage, which I don't think currently exists, would be having seven upgraded units while you're a level six player. Uh, that would be 21 damage from your units and then six from yourself, which is going to be 27. So of note, everyone starts with 40 health in this game. Um, there is even a unit that has 50 instead. Maximum damage on an insane high roll. I lost no units. I have all these upgrades and I have maximum level. We'll do a little under three quarters of a player's full health. That is a notable thing because any of you who have played Battlegrounds know that one of the problems with that game is the damage formula and how you could be winning the entire time and then go up against one player that has one really fortunate RNG rounder is like one turn ahead of you on scaling and gets really good at really lucky attacks and they can just hit you for full health if it's late enough in the game um, because of how the damage formula is done in that game. And I really like that this game has a more forgiving damage formula. Um, the most damage I think I have personally dealt or received was around 20, and it was very late in the game with a very high roll build, uh, and obviously that's a two-hit kill. Uh, at least gives your opponent a chance to respond and do something, and if there's other people in the lobby, it gives them a lot of time unless they get really unlucky with matching. I am unsure about exactly how... Uh, the matchmaking is done. I don't. Uh, I have not played enough or read enough on the formula to answer quite how randomized it is. If it prioritizes top four and bottom four, anything like that. Uh, that's something I will hopefully delve into more as I play this game. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit brawl and we're gonna start an auto battle. Um, the attack order in this game, by the way, uh, I don't think I mentioned, but you just saw they attacked first. In this case, it was just. A random who attacks first. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab the shrink spell, even though it means I'm gonna have to lock for this stuff. Um, we're gonna actually take. Uh, no, we'll take this first. I'm gonna lock here, even though um, it's gonna limit my choices because these are discounted. Um, and I will quickly explain attack order. Uh, it didn't matter where that person's thing was. It just attack first because it was the only thing they had in play, but your attack order is in reading order, which is top to bottom, left to right. So in this case, I am organized 
left to right here. This would attack first. If I were to put this down here, this unit would attack first because that is first on the left to right, top to bottom orientation. Um, there are front rows and back rows. Unless you have a special ability that says otherwise, which is called flying, um, units that attack will only attack units in the front row um, until the front row does not exist. The back row is safe. Uh, units do take damage while they are attacking, though. So if your back row unit has an attack stat, they will declare an attack when it's their turn and can still be killed via those means. Uh, at this time, doesn't matter. I don't have anything I need to protect, but this unit right here has a power called support. What supporting does is if you put it in a back row slot, uh, any space is directly in front of it. So this space or these two squares, this space, these two, so on. Um, would gain that support ability. Uh, this unit gives plus three attack to the units in front of it. Uh, that effect will exist as long as there are units in front of it and it is alive. If this unit were to die before these units do, uh, its support ability would fall off because it is no longer there supporting. Uh, this unit has a special just passive of your other evil characters have plus one attack. And on that note, let's go ahead and point out what evil looks like. Uh, there's nothing good in play at this time, but uh, you can tell units um, alignment without even having to scroll over them by looking at the rim of the card. Uh, see how these are gray? That is neutral. Good are kind of like yellow gold, and then evil are this like purplish black. Uh, also, if you scroll over the card, it tells you their affiliations and alignments. So this is a mage that is evil. This is a monster that is evil. Um, like a lot of other auto battlers, there are synergy in all kinds of different ways. This card could be played for synergy with evil cards. This card could be played with synergy with monster cards. This card could be played with evil monsters. And you can kind of build around different types of strategies as you go. Obviously, some strategies are easier to build than others or better than others on a consistency basis, at least. Uh, this could be played just as an evil unit, just as a mage, as an evil mage. You could just be playing it because it's a support character. Uh, dwarves are another classification. There can be dwarves that are good or evil. A lot of dwarves are neutral in this game. Um, there, are so, there also can... Uh, there also is ways to change alignment of things with spells and such. Um, but unless you have card effects that care about alignment, your alignment doesn't matter. Um, there are also treasures that can be uncovered that uh, do things based on alignments. It could say, like, um, all of your evil units get a buff. Or um, I know for a fact there's a treasure that says every time one of your good units slays an evil unit, which means attacks it and kills it, uh, it gets a permanent plus one plus one. That is obviously very contingent on your opponent having evil units and you slaying their things. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit Brawl, go into another random match here, and then we'll continue a little bit of explanation. So that unit is killed. It had a uh, uh, when I die effect, which is why it summoned a thing. Uh, this unit here has a passive. It was just, it gains stats. Uh, you may have noticed they had a lot of HP on their units up in the front. The reason for that is their uh, special ability it's their play. That was Jack's Giant. Characters in your front row have plus two health. And so this particular character is a little bit stronger um, as far as just trading goes in the early game. Uh, that power is definitely a more early game power. The two health will be a lot less important later in the game unless you have other things that cause that those stats to cascade. Um, you can get insanely high stats if you get the right synergies. Um... I'll kind of just break down what the rest of this lobby looks like since we're already talking about that guy's power. So uh, this character's Pup the Magic Dragon. Their ability is your characters with support given an additional plus two, plus one. What that is stating is this person just gave these guys three attack. That's why they say six, one. And you can see that they are visually represented that way. Um, let's see. If I were to be playing as that character, instead of saying nine, one, because it gave an extra plus two plus one, it would give 11, it, this would be an 11 two instead of the nine one. Um, it is still a supporting ability. It does not gain that stat pool itself. It is just saying you, your support units are slightly better what they do. Even if the support ability doesn't give stats, pup makes them give stats in addition to whatever the support ability gives. Um, 
We already went over Jax Giant. Merlin has a special effect that anytime you cast a spell, one of your characters randomly gets plus two, plus one. Of note in this game, you may have seen I can move this card in and out of my hand. Um, this is essentially your bench. Your bench is out of play, but still usable by you. Uh, you can swap between units from your bench and in play, so if you have something you're trying to dig for three of a kind of, like Tiny, that's it, but you don't have room for him in play or don't want to make room for him, you can keep the extra one in your hand. Or if you have a unit that's good against a specific strategy, but you don't want to... Um, but you don't want that to be um, the only thing that you're doing. Like, it's a, more of a counter card than anything you want to go in on. You can keep it in your hand, stuff like that. Um... As you can see, when I gain buffs, they visually visually display the buffs. Um, that includes, if I play a spell that says all my units get buffed forever, uh, it will just change what they are printed as. Um, at this time, there's no way of checking what their default stats are. It's just a matter of uh, understanding that the game is already doing math for you. The only things it won't keep visually displayed for you is effects that only trigger during certain instances and aren't permanent. So if you have a treasure that like boosts a random unit when you start a combat, or you have a unit that gets stronger as things die for the round, you won't see that math done for you because it doesn't actually have any math to do yet. Um, of note is if I have a unit in play that buffs, um, that buffs something in the shop, you will have a visual display for that buff already. Uh, and already know its stats, you do not have to do the math. So, for example, this uh, Minotaur makes my other evil characters have plus one attack, and you saw that it made my Mad Mim a 1-3 instead of a 0-3, and now she's a 0-3 again. If this is in play and a Mad Mim is down in the shop, it will look just like this Mad Mim. It has already done the math and treated it as if you're buffing it, so you do not need to worry about that. Um... Another thing I just realized I have not mentioned of note for people is that you can drag your units up to the shop and sell them. Um, units sell for one gold, normally speaking. There is at least one unit that sells for more, but rule of thumb is they sell back for one. Um, because you do have a maximum hand size of four and a maximum battlefield of seven, so eventually you do have to make tr changes, you do have to give up things you have and rotate to better units and so on and so forth. Um, this button here, you spend one gold and you can reroll the shop. It will display a brand new set of units and a new spell. Um, as stated before, only one spell can be cast a turn. This spell gives me a gold, but I take a damage because all it would do is give me a reroll. I'm not going to deal with taking two damage right now to get a reroll. Um, but I'm going to draw your attention over here. You can see how my wheel has been filling because uh, we have played two rounds. We have gained two of the three experience we need to level after this round. This is going to finish going through. This will say three. Uh, my damage numbers go up, level 3 units can appear, level 3 spells can appear, uh, my selection will be a little bit bigger, so will all my opponents. Now let's go ahead and finish breaking down what the rest of just the things in the shop do. Obviously if you don't care about, or not things in the shop, what the other characters in this game do, um, and if you don't care about what the characters in the lobby do, then uh, and you don't want to have information overload in that regard, then just yeah, kind of fast forward a few seconds and don't worry about it. Um, I know it can seem like a lot of information at one time, but at the root of it, you're really just looking to find cool synergies, kind of like a deck builder, except uh, it's an auto battler. Um, get three of a kind and synergies, get cool treasures that help support said synergies, and hopefully win matches enough to get in the top four. Uh, like most auto battlers, this auto battler is one where you are considered a winner if you get uh, anywhere from first to fourth place. So you just need to be in the top 50% of the players in that room. Um, so yes, Geppetto has a special effect that when you summon a character during a brawl, you give it plus two, plus two. So an example of that is that that um, cat I fought during that last round, when it died, it summoned another cat. If Geppetto had that cat, uh, the cat it summons would have gotten a plus two, plus two buff during that round. Um, Horde Dragon has a special effect that you get... Um, treasure one level higher than whatever you're matching. So if I were to get three of a kind of tiny, I would get a two treasure. Uh, but Horde Dragon would get a level three treasure. That is one of the ways to get the level seven treasure I had mentioned is be Horde Dragon and get a level six triple. 
Uh, Krampus has a special effect that your evil characters have plus one, plus one. Uh, that effect would also visually be on display forever. So if I were Krampus, this thing, as a default in the shop, would look like a one, four, not a zero, three. It will always do the math for you if it is math that is always happening. At least at this time. Um, I'm Celestial Tiger. I already broke it down, but it doubles the ability of your level two and level three treasures. I think there may be some exceptions to this. I don't know if that's bugs or... Um, if that is just a case of how the coding works, because there have been a couple of times where I've used an effect that like doubles a thing and it doesn't double specific things, but it will double other things. And uh, I, I presume that the Celestial Tiger may have a similar issue. Just for example, at some point, I think I got to cast two of the same spell because um, I had a thing where was like, at the start of the combat, cast a spell, and then I had a treasure that was um, double your treasure's effects. And unless it was a skipping the visual information of what my first spell was, uh, I don't think it was casting two spells. And I don't know if that was a bug or if that was a, um, a coding thing where because it misses the timing on beginning of combat when it's copying it. Could be either or, but if it's a bug type thing, it's possible Celestial Tiger doesn't quite duplicate everything. And then um, Mrs. Claus is actually the opposite of Krampus. Uh, you, uh, your evil characters have plus one, plus one. Mrs. Claus gives your good characters plus one, plus one. And um, as I mentioned before, the frames show you, and now we actually have Humpty Dumpty here is a good character. See? Good ache. Humpty Dumpty, as you can see, is a very overstated unit comparatively to things I have been getting. And by the way, this has very high attack for its level two, and the trade-off is it has no health. Uh, Humpty Dumpty has quite good stats, but when it dies, it just goes away. Uh, that's what it means when it says it can't be put back together again. Um, it will not respawn at the end of combat. Uh, that investment has been lost. You cannot take it and sell it in the shop. It is gone. If you triple this, it does not lose that ability. It is just a bigger version of Humpty Dumpty. So if you ever decide to triple Humpty Dumpty, go in knowing that you are either investing in a short-term unit that will eventually die, or that you will eventually be selling that unit to recoup some of your expenditure, and that you are tripling it for a level 2 treasure, which, as I've stated, aren't super great most of the time. Um, we're ready to brawl. I just want to go ahead and draw your attention to one other thing. Uh, if it will show okay it's not going to show right here so we'll wait until we get into a combat with mrs claus which as it's highlighted she's actually in the next unit <coughs> i just want to point out um her her splash art is some of my favorite in the game because she's riding a, a reindeer and dual wielding pistols and it's a lot of fun um one more thing before i click brawl i realized i did not point out this baby dragon has flying the reason i orientated it furthest left for this round of combat um, is I want this to attack as soon as possible because flying, as I've stated, will attack the back row first. And a lot of support units do pesky things like boost health and attack, but the, a, most the early game, if not all the early game support units, don't have stats of their own unless they've been buffed. So if you can skip over them um, and just get rid of their support before it does anything to you, it can be very powerful. Um, so of note, flying units can be quite strong not everyone will be, will be playing support but when they play support it is more likely to happen in um the early game than the late game on average because there are less late game support builds that i have personally seen at least okay so we have a couple new mechanics that we can discuss now um or maybe not a couple but some more flavor of it. So this support unit says good support. So this is just like this support unit, except that it only works when the units in front of it are good. So as you can see, it is an inherently stronger version of this card in that it gives two attack and three health. And like a lot of auto battlers, health is pretty important, but none of my units in play are good. So if I were to grab this, I currently cannot buff it. However, I would like to draw your attention to a couple of other things in the shop. This unit has Slay. I transform into a character that is one level higher than your hero. So what Slay is, is an effect that says if you attack with this unit and kill that unit, you get the bonus. Of note, that means you must be the one having your card go whoop and hit the thing and it has to die when it does it. 
for that effect to go off. If your unit is attacked and kills the unit, it is not a slay, even though it killed the unit. Also of note is uh, you do not need to survive your attack for your slay to effect to work, but depending on what the slay effect is, kind of determines when that timing will matter for you. So for example, Poliwoggle transforms. If he dies, he'll still transform, but you won't see what he becomes until um, you start your next round and have your respawn. This unit, Adventurer, is one of the examples of how to get extra experience. Uh, it has Slay plus one experience, but as you can see, it's a 1-1 one, one, and it's a level three unit, so it costs more money. That is a high risk, high reward slay. I um, will probably be doing a thing to try to make this go off though, because the sooner you get more levels, the better you are for uh, getting more powerful things to use against your opponents and being able to kind of shop around for your win conditions before other people can. Let me just close the back door really quick because my dog walked in and I don't want to deal with flies. <clears throat> Let me just get a quick, quick sip of water, really, uh, right now, because I've been speaking on this quite a bit. Uh, whoever just joined chat, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I'm kind of doing a uh, how to play. Uh, I will gladly answer any questions for you if you missed something I've already explained or maybe ask about a thing I haven't. Doesn't matter. I have no problem just going through it if it's if it's needed. Uh, this unit has an ability called Ranged. What Ranged is, is a quite powerful ability. It, it states that when you are attacking, you don't take damage. So as you've seen in these random combats, when you attack, um, units swap damage, and then, you know, if they survive, there's damage on them. If they don't, then they're removed from play. But uh, if you attack with a Ranged unit, the Ranged unit does not get attacked back. And that does not matter if you are attacking another Ranged unit, you do not get attacked back. Uh, when you are attacked, though, you do receive the damage and uh, deal the damage back unless, obviously, a ranged unit is also attacking you. Quite a powerful ability. This particular one is uh, an interesting card, too, because if you go with slay units, it gets stronger as you land slay abilities, which can be quite powerful, um, but a lot of slay cards in this game are a little bit high risk, high reward, because they often will start a little understated and need you to get some synergies that make them bigger. Uh, my spell for this turn would give a monster plus three plus three permanently. So in this case, it cares about that affiliate, not the affiliation of evil, but it does care about the identity of monster. So nothing else I have in play would be able to take that effect, but I could give this a permanent buff. <clears throat> so I'm in an interesting little situation here because I could could very aggressively sell to try to get this with this and make this nice and big support wise um, and then just move along but I could also buy him over a couple of turns by locking but it's going to take away my option because everything that's not bought from the shop isn't going to roll into a new thing if I lock um, in this particular case, especially since I'm in a bot game, I'm going to take a little bit more of a greedy option and play this more patiently. I think if I were playing a normal game, what I would probably do here is sell this dragon, buy the Good Witch, and then just double invest in supporting this by uh, placing the Good Witch where he was and placing this here. It would have the limitation of attacking second for me, which makes it more likely to be attacked before it can attack but it would have the upside of um, having even more stats given to it. Since it's bots and this is more about teaching people how the game works anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say give this a stat boost. I normally wouldn't boost this unit because I don't typically keep Minotaurs. Even if I play evil units, there are just much better things in play. Um, but this isn't an awful stat line to have at this point in the game, so we're going to go ahead and just go with it. Uh, I'm also going to lock the store because next round I can go ahead and grab this and I can grab the Shadow Assassin, assassin and hopefully scale that up a bit as well by landing some slays. So in a perfect world here, we're going to slay with the adventurer and we're going to get an extra experience and get ahead. Uh, so we didn't kill the thing and because of that, no slay trigger. So right there, this thing boosts health. The fact I was able to just fly and hit it is a big deal 
because I took away that health boost and it made units that um, may have survived not be able to. So this uh, says devour a character to gain an experience. Devouring is the same thing as selling it, except you don't get money for it. You, you lose it and um, you get a thing for losing it. Uh, it is a little bit tempting for me because I could get ahead and experience in that way as well. But since we're already kind of on this game plan of trying to make our adventurer carry us further, we can just do that. And then I need to evaluate if I want to buy the Shadow Assassin because I could also try to find another good unit to support. But I think for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Shadow Assassin. We're going to bench one of these dwarfs because our flyer is a bit better than a dwarf just because of being able to kill back row. And we're going to put this as our first attack because uh, ranged won't be attacked back. So if we attack first, it's still an extra target in the front row that will hopefully be hit instead of our adventurer. Because we're still just going for some extra experience here. We really just want adventurer to be able to attack and kill something. So unfortunately, the adventurer died, but it killed the unit. I did get that extra experience. So you'll see that when this round um, ends and the next one begins, I'll be a level four when I gain that experience and everyone else in the, in the lobby should still be level three unless another bot. Nope. So now I have this inherent advantage that I have access to level four units while these opponents do not. And that is a very big deal and why something like this high risk, high reward unit can be quite strong. Um, this unit is also a quite strong unit. It, it's ranged, as I mentioned before, that means it doesn't take damage when it attacks. And it has a, an ability that states that when one of your uh, princes or princesses is attacked and killed, uh, it can make a bonus attack. Uh, right now, I don't have a ton, but my adventurer is a princess, so it would trigger a bonus attack specifically if my adventurer is atta attacked and killed. Um, honestly, it's a pretty strong unit, and it's something I'm pretty tempted to take um especially because now that i'm a level four it's gonna be a lot harder to find the level two treasures and also even with my ability to double level two treasures it's probably just not worth sitting on them for much longer at this point um another thing i don't think i mentioned for for any of you that are learning to play from this video the units in your hand can take buffs if it's something that buffs out of combat. If you cast a spell that says a random unit of yours gets a boost, or like the Merlin effect that says a random character of yours gets a boost, your hand does count towards those random characters. So if you have a card in your hand that you really don't want to take buffs, um, you have to evaluate if it's worth holding that card while playing things that do random buffs because you could be giving them up um, in the process. Of note, um, Things like this card that say when one of your characters triggers a slay ability, do a thing. Um, it did not gain that effect when this slayed last time because it was already dead, I think. I may have missed it. I, uh, I, th I think it missed the effect. I think it was dead. Um, if it were alive and in play, it would get that effect. In my hand, it would not because during combat, your hand cannot see things. However, there are some cards that get boosts through other timings, like uh, when you cast a spell, I get plus one, plus one, or when I cast a spell, buff mages. And those cards will function while sitting in your hand as long as the spells being cast are being cast during the shopping phase and not during combat, because there are ways to cast spells in combat. So just an important note to have We're definitely going to put one of these here because it gets the buff. We're going to sell our baby dragon here and put this here. I could try to grab another adventure to go for leveling it and such. But in a perfect world, the adventure is going to get a couple more hits off. And then it's going to completely fall off. Because um, once I'm level 6 or close to it, I don't need the adventure's effect anymore. It's not going to do anything for me. So that, what just happened there is this spell that was cast was deal one damage to all, uh, to all units at the beginning of combat. Uh, of note, if my adventure hadn't have been buffed, it would have died because it's normally a 1-1. One, one. But thankfully, it had that extra health and it was able to just get there. <laughs> 
Okay, so we're officially at the point where it's going to get a little bit more awkward for how we want to position our things. We're going to have the adventure be a little bit weaker, and there's a good chance that I'm just not going to get enough slay triggers and this assassin is going to leave play. I'm going to try for like another round or two to see if I can get a, a reasonable trigger on it. And if I still can't make it happen, then I'm just going to accept defeat on it. Uh, I could take this Lady of the Lake for a health buff, but right now I really want this adventurer to be physically stronger. Um, I will still put the adventurer second to give it a little bit better chance of getting the damage in there. I will also risk boosting its attack because i really would like this extra experience and because i have two court wizards which want to be in a prince and princess build i'm gonna go ahead and grab romeo romeo is a prince uh he has a special effect of last breath if juliet is dead summon her and give her plus six plus six to sprawl of note uh romeo is a level three and juliet's a level four and i know a little bit of this is information overload don't worry about things like me telling you what builds do what or um, or what synergies things are if that's too much to take in. I'm just walking you through what I'm thinking for my game at the same time I'm teaching you how the game is played. Um, the important thing here is to learn the basics of the game and um, do that at whatever pace is comfortable for you. Uh, this is a support unit. It also has ranged. Uh, so that makes it inherently stronger than other support units because when it attacks, it's not dying. Um, so it doesn't need to have the flaw of no attack stats in order to not charge in and die. It can still make some damage in. Uh, I just don't personally want health at this time. I am valuing the attack higher. Often though, Lady of the Lake is quite a powerful card. And if I had enough units I wanted to sell, I would consider grabbing this right now, especially because it works quite well. Actually, you know what? As I spoke on it, I realized I have enough units I'm willing to sell. This is a bit aggressive sales-wise, but um, Nutcracker is the first example of quest. Uh, quests are represented by the scroll on the top of the card, and uh, they can vary depending on what the quest is. Uh, the lowest level quest thing is Cinderella, and it's hers is just I see you cast spells. She can literally sit in your hand while you do that if you want. Um, it's just she does a thing for you. It's nice. <laughs> um, of note, Romeo is also a prince. Um, and as I was saying, these guys synergize with princes. Nutcracker, also a prince. Nutcracker's uh, quest is if it survives damage five times, that is five times total, not five times in one combat. That is actually the deciding factor for why I sold all that stuff for Lady of the Lake, because it giving him plus five health increases the odds of me being able to get this quest done sooner than later. Um, that's another copy of that. The reason it's shimmering is it's showing you that you do have a synergy with it and that you have a copy already. Uh, this is a good animal that gives your other good characters plus one health. So it would, all, all these golden border things, which is everything I have in play but Mad Mim, this would boost your health by one. Um, a lot of the time Rainbow Unicorn just is not strong enough later in the game and we're already kind of transitioning into the mid to late game. Um, especially since we're a little ahead on experience. But everyone's level 4 out of 6 right now. Anyways, uh, as I was saying though, sorry if I give you information overload. I'm trying to, um, to break this down kind of as a let's play at the same time that I am um, teaching the game. Pace yourself. If, if me saying what my strategy does is just too much, just... Ignore it to the best of your abilities or fast forward through it, whatever you need to do. Um, but I will kind of just continue explaining what things do as I go. Um, and you'll take it or you'll leave it. So I grabbed an extra copy of that because it's we're still early enough that that'd be great. And I notably don't have a treasure yet. In an ideal world, you have a treasure or two by now getting some triples. Um, I have not aggressively rolled for triples, notably. Um, I could be more aggressively rolling for things, but I've been, like, okay with what's been flipping down. I haven't had anything that I'm like, I really wish we got better stuff here. Um, and for that reason alone, it's just been fine for me to kind of stick with what's going on at this time. Um, but in a real game, um, especially if you have an okay 
battlefield and are doing all right damage wise i would recommend um rolling a little bit more aggressively for things you want especially if you know the game well enough to know what sets of things you're looking for and what levels they appear at uh, some builds have very important units to show up early obviously a lot of important builds care about level five and level six units because that's the nature of auto battlers. They put the really big bombs at the really high levels. But just for example, if you want to be in a build that really cares about spells, this unit is actually extremely important and you can get it as soon as round one. Um, and this, this card is a perfect example of one of the examples I gave beforehand. Even if this were in my hand, if I cast a spell, it will gain those stats as long as that spell is cast while my hand is visible to the game, which means not in combat. Um, if, it's in, if it's in my battlefield and a spell is cast, uh, as long as it's alive, it will get that buff um, when I cast that spell. So even an effect that's like cast a spell in combat through a treasure, through a unit, would buff this if I had it in play. Um, we already kind of talked about this unit. This unit has a, a thing called Last Breath. That is, when it dies, it does something. Uh, this particular one has a bad effect when it dies because the idea of this unit is that you want to protect it. Uh, we're already late enough in the game. I'm not going to go for this card. Uh, but this card can generate you a lot of value. Um, as you can see, it says if it survives the Brawl, you get plus two gold. But it has Last Breath, which means if it dies your opponent gets one plus one gold. And what that means is the beginning of the next round, when you go into the shop phase, you would have more gold. Um, as I mentioned before, this counts up until 12 and can exceed that. So next round, um, this will be 10 out of 10. If I had a prize pig and I uh, kept it alive, it would say 12 out of 10. If we were at maximum gold, it would say 14 out of 10. Because as I mentioned, you can exceed the maximum as long as you are doing it through effects. Um... You will never exceed the maximum just from the shop handing you gold, though. Okay. Um, and, I, and I'm going to just reiterate some things uh, because I want to make sure I continue talking and going through just how the game functions. Um, as I've mentioned, in Auto Battlers, you have a timer normally, and when that timer goes off, your, your round has begun. Uh, the reason we don't have a timer here is I am playing a practice game against bots so that I have all the time in the world to break down everything that we need to break down for you and and more potentially. But um, the stuff that flipped out, I'm going to kind of just tell you what they do, um, take it or leave it. Uh, so you've already seen the normal dwarf. This is one of the best dwarves in the game for, um, for a dwarf build because anytime it gets a bonus to its attack or health, it is doubled. Of note, that includes things like support. If I were to put this in front of a support unit that does something for it, so like this one gives plus 5 health no matter what you are, it would receive plus 10 health. If I put it in front of this, it would receive plus 6 instead of plus 3. Uh, if I get it through the random unit gain of this card, it would actually get plus two, plus two, instead of the plus one, plus one. Uh, on that note, I'm going to gamble on hitting it because I am okay with just selling anything else I get to buy it and make up the difference. Uh, this unit I just got, by the way, gets plus two health every round permanently. It will gain that if it's in your hand or in play. As long as you own it, it will be gaining those buffs. It can be very, very powerful if you obtain it early in the game. Um... Given the fact I am not really in Treance and we're pretty late for this to scale upwards, I'm definitely just going to resell it and grab this doubly, like I mentioned before, because it's quite strong. And um, I'm going to pull off one of these Court Wizards for now, even though um, having them in play is quite good. I want to keep the, the Mad Men for at least one more round to hopefully get another hit with Adventure. And we're going to put doubly down because... Like I mentioned before, look at that. Look at that nice boost for us. I could give up stats on Adventure to like reposition some stuff and make Doubly have some attack stats too. But for now, we're just going to kind of use Doubly as an annoying big wall of health. Just like we could put Lady of the Lake down and give more health here for the Nutcracker to cr Cracker to quest better. Um, but I would be giving, I would be taking stats away from Adventure if I were to do that. So. For at least this round, we're going to go ahead and do one more just commit on Adventurer trying. I don't think I'm going to keep Adventurer around after this round, whether it gets a Slay or not, though. Okay, so we're lucky. We got the Slay, so we're already level 5. 
Uh, that means next round we have quite a dramatic um, power spike because there are a lot of good units at level 5. Um, and that mean, that puts us at least two uh, rounds ahead of everyone for just hitting endgame and level at this point, unless some of the other bots gain stuff. So as you can see, I just took a bunch of damage. I believe I already broke down damage, but just in case I didn't or you need a visual now that there's more to see, um, the damage is based on how many units you have in play plus your level. Um, so right now this battlefield would do 7 damage plus 5. It would do 12 if all of the units survived because it's only surviving units that deal damage. If the surviving units are leveled, such as this thing, which you have the glow that... Let me hide really quick. You have the glow showing you that it is leveled. Then leveled units that are still alive deal 3 damage instead of 1. Uh, but level of the unit does not matter. It just matters if it is a upgraded unit or a non-upgraded unit. So, because that was a level 4 unit, I have access to level 4 treasures. And I have 3 to choose from. I also could choose to skip and get 2 money. Uh, if I already had three treasures in play, if I were to take one of these, I would have to lose one of the treasures I already have. You do not get two money for replacing a treasure because you did not skip it. You benefited from it at some point. So this has hidden cash. If you win a brawl, one of your surviving people gets plus three, plus three. Otherwise, you get a, uh, get three gold. What's really cool about that is no matter what, you get something for this. You either lose and get money or you win and get a permanent boost to your battlefield. But it is random uh, to your surviving characters. So you can start buffing a thing that you're not necessarily planning on keeping. Uh, forked, forking Rod can be quite powerful. It doubles the casting on any spells that cost two or less. That includes spells that uh, will let you cast more spells. It won't give you extra more spells when it says you can cast another spell this turn. It doesn't say another another spell, so you can only cast one more inherently, but it will double the rest of the card's effect. So if it rolls, a, if it rerolls your room, it will roll twice and you don't get to stop. If it buffs a unit, it would buff the unit twice, so on and so forth. Uh, this card deck of many things will cast uh, a random spell at the start of each brawl. So like that cat I showed you earlier that gets a boost when spells are cast, that's a perfect example of if it's in your hand, it wouldn't get that boost because your hand doesn't exist during a brawl. But if it were in the battlefield, it would get the boost because your battlefield does exist during a brawl. Um, of note, things such as Forking Rod will double cast something like Deck of Many Things if the cost on the spell that is randomly cast matches. It is not considered a free spell just because it's being cast for free. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take the Hidden Cash. I'm pretty far away from a spell build, especially given the fact that I don't have a single unit that cares about spells right now. Don't get me wrong though, Forking Rod and Deck of Many Things are quite strong even if you aren't in a spell build. I just would like to get some scaling going and I know I'm about to kind of downsize off of some of these units that I'm not planning on keeping later into the game. Uh, this is another princess and she has a slay effect that is slay three enemies to do a thing. Uh, that can happen across any number of rounds but it has to be on her attacks so it's unlikely to happen in one round for obvious reasons. Um, I could use this if I wanted to gain 1 HP. This is one of those examples of a spell that you kind of cast when you're in a spell build, and you're less likely to cast it if you don't have units that care about spells, because 1 health isn't a lot, um, but it counting as a spell cast and casting another spell for round is quite good. There is a high level unit in this game that scales based on the number of spells that you have cast, not the number of spells it has seen you cast. So if you ever have just a gold floating and and you don't want to roll for whatever reason, like you want to lock this room and you have a, a you know a one cost potion that heals you for one, there's no reason not to buy it. In fact, uh, by buying it, you at least get to roll and get, uh, get a new random um, potion or not potion, random spell moving forward. We will grab this because we. It would be quite good for us to get it tripled, um, but also it gives extra attack stats, and we do want this slay effect to go off now. Uh, this adventure can sit in our hand for now because we don't have a strict use for it at this time. I do think now that my court wizard's a little bit bigger and more powerful, we're going to go ahead and swap the doubly out for now. Uh, so the reason I'm doing this is that Court Wizard, when one of your princes or princesses is attacked and killed, he gets to make a bonus attack on them. Uh, all three of my other front row units 
are a princess or prince. So if uh, we go into combat and this gets attacked and dies, and he is still alive, he'll get a free attack. And because he's ranged, he doesn't get hit back. It's quite strong. Um, he would be a bit stronger in my back row because he would not be as easy to attack. You would need a flyer or something that hits back row or, you know, random unit. But at this time, um, I think he's best suited as our first attacker because we want this to get as much of the attack buffs as possible. We want this to get as many health buffs as possible. We could use this as a first attacker for the moment, but that wouldn't get him out of the front row when we have three support units that we want to have buffs from. So much rather just keep him in on that first attack where he has a good chance of surviving at least an attack or two. So they just had a unit... Um, after it attacks, triggers a last beth on a, uh, on a carriage just behind it. That's why they summon the sheep, because this person has last beth summon sheep. Uh, as you can see, treants are also an affiliation in the game. Um, there are animals, there are treants, princesses and princesses, uh, mages, beasts, dragons, and there might be a couple other things I'm, I'm overlooking, and then the alignments themselves. Some of the affiliations are a little bit more clear on what you would do synergy wise oh dwarves i forgot to mention dwarves even though i mentioned that before so i finished that quest it has now increased in stats because it's basically treated like i got a three of a kind and it's also giving me a treasure as, as, I, as if i've gotten a three of a kind so i'm once again being offered maria no sorry she's barking because someone rang the front door um she's normally quite polite um forking rod once again quite good for doubling spells in this case it would replace all the characters in the shop with one level higher twice so this would be a level five level six so on and so forth so that's quite tempting actually um duplicator gives you an additional copy of the first character you summon each brawl so if you have effects that do some things like that bow peep in that last round you could get extra copies um but you do need to have room for them i also clearly don't have summonings at this time the only thing i have that even has the potential of summoning is romeo but i don't have juliet to go with it uh, and then, as we've mentioned before, deck of many things, casting a random spell. Um, specifically because of Masquerade Ball synergy with Forking Rod, I'm going to go ahead and take the Mas Masquerade Brawl. I think I am going to grab the Cinderella because her quest is cast four spells, and by doubling the spell, it will actually count twice. See? So, uh, Oni King is actually a very good chase card if you want to go a monster build, because it's when one of your monsters attacks, it gets plus 10, plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 for the brawl. That does include itself, and of note, I have two other fairly good monsters with it. This is a good opportunity to hard pivot if I want to uh, change off of what I'm doing. Um, of note... I have a fair amount of things that are probably worth selling here because a lot of the stuff I grabbed, I grabbed knowing that um, I wasn't in them for the long game. This, by the way, gives you plus, uh, gives you support, plus three attack, and double your slay abilities. Um, so this is not considered a slay ability, unfortunately. Um, please excuse me. I'm gonna go check the door because they rang the bell again.
you. Uh, sorry about the interruption. Um, let me regain my train of thought. I believe I was discussing Baba Yaga. It uh, has support plus three attack and double slay abilities. It will give the three attack even if the unit doesn't have a slay ability. And I was going into saying, uh, even though this thing's quest is to slay enemies, that is not considered a slay ability. It will not double the quest progress on this unit. To be a slay ability, it needs to actually say, slay, something happens, like what I was doing earlier. Okay, so... Um, this other monster, it's not the best monster in the world, but it has a very powerful ability and it only needs to have a pair to upgrade. And that gives you uh, a much easier attempt at making a um, a tier five treasure and five, level five and six treasures are often very, very strong. Um, because I haven't seen a Juliet yet and I think I'm officially going to pivot into monsters a little bit more because of uh, what I have going on. I will toss the Romeo. We're going to grab the Baba Yaga first. And our plan right now, we're going to actually lock for this because we're only giving up a two card reroll. Um, the rest of it will, will reroll when the round starts. And I think getting the Sea Terror is probably worth it, especially because I'm already in five. So, um... It's not like I can't hit more of these. I think we're going to pull this one down and put this here. Um, hmm. We're going to go ahead and throw that this way because I would like to swap Baba Yaga into play. I realize immediately that I don't want to do it quite in that order though because... Um, I would like Oni King to attack as late as possible just in case it's at risk of dying when it attacks. Um, this is kind of awkward for me. I could play another support unit down and shift uni Oni King up. I could not support with the Baba Yaga and shift Baba Yaga up. Honestly, I think the safest thing for me to do is going to be... Something like this. Um, as much as I don't want to put the Oni King at risk for, in attacking, I haven't fully pivoted into this monster build yet. So I need to make sure I have an okay amount of other things going on. And I, at least by doing this, there's a chance the Court Wizard will get um, an attack or two off for free from his effect. Um, this being ranged, it will not take damage when it attacks, and it will get the plus 10, plus 10 from the Oni King if it attacks first. Uh, very strong, especially if the Oni King is able to attack before it gets killed, um, it is very likely to uh, not die. So that card um, that that thing transformed into hits everything behind the thing it hits, and that's why you saw that effect where they both took damage there, is behind is the direct adjacency in the rows. So as you can see, though, the Oni King being able to attack made a big deal because it's buff to itself kept it alive. So that worked out that time around. It could have gone poorly, though. And one of the two of those, which is this one, just got the buff. Uh, it Was All a Dream is quite a cool spell. It lets you swap your heroes. Um, given the fact I haven't even grabbed a level 2 or 3 treasure and my hero effect has basically not done anything, we are actually going to purchase this and just become a new hero. So now our options are Horde Dragon. You get a higher level uh, treasure. Interesting, because I'm pretty sure Horde Dragon was in the game, right? Didn't I point it out? I didn't think that you could hit something that was in the game, but maybe it's because it, they died already. But good thing to keep in mind. Cursed King is you get plus one gold and take one damage each round as long as you have more than one health. Uh, I've never tried this unit, but I... Per Hi, Shades Realm. Yeah, it does look familiar. You recommended it. I'm, kind of, I'm currently doing a, uh, a breakdown for how to play it for people. I'm just doing a bot game to kind of explain it because couldn't keep my train of thought well enough uh, in a real game. <laughs> uh, I haven't tried this character, but um, I perceive it to be one of those things that you like to have at the beginning of the game, not at the end of the game, because you just don't need the extra gold as badly. 
but in the early game, it can set you pretty far ahead. Uh, Mordred is a kind of cool effect. The first time someone dies, you get to summon a unit from your hand. But I'm going to take Grandmother for, for, for sure, because Grandmother becomes the big bad wolf when you're level 6, which permanently boosts, boosts your characters. And I am level 6, so by swapping to this, I have just gained the plus 3 plus 3 to everything I've been playing. We're going to go ahead and throw the Oni King down a row now. We're going to go ahead. Actually, we'll do it. We'll do it this way. Because we wanted to do attacks with our monsters ASAP. Yeah, I really appreciate the lack of time limit in bot, ma bot matches. Um, I didn't actually know that the first match you did was a bot match until I... Um, Finished it and then went. Oh, uh, there's a there's a bot option that explains why there was no timer. I just thought this was a weird auto battler that had some interesting coding to make this work. Uh, Great Pumpkin King is a ridiculously powerful monster because it has a special effect of last breath for each of your dead evil characters. You summon a lower level evil character. So all these evil characters I've been putting into play, they're pretty high level units, and if they die, this pumpkin summons replacements basically and you can low roll and get some really unlucky things yeah um uh, as shade realms in chat just pointed out i did also gain the extra 10 well uh, 10 health for being big bad wolf because this character starts with an extra 10 health so the game when i transitioned into it gave me that 10 health difference that uh you may have noticed my health shift upwards as well i forgot to mention that um these are very powerful units for um for a completely different build that I am not in, but uh, Good Boy, when it dies, gives all of your good characters its attack and health for the brawl, and there are ways to make it very big very fast. Uh, Baby Bear, when it dies, summons Papa Bear, and when Papa Bear dies, it summons Mama Bear, and um, as you've seen, there are things that give you summonings. Also, this is a little bit stronger with like this character, because all of these summonings are getting this boost of plus three, plus three, which is quite good, but um, I'm definitely looking at monsters. Um, I'm honestly considering just dumping the Cinderella, even though I'm one spell away from a treasure, just because of the fact that um, level two treasures aren't super good and we're pretty late in the game. Um, because I could just sell three units and have this pumpkin right now and not lock for this. I think I'm going to do it. And for the record, I, I probably wouldn't make this decision um, in a real game. This is super greedy. But um, we're playing against bots, and this is about teaching people how the game functions. And uh, we'll play better when we're doing real games. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Shades Realm, I really appreciate the recommendation. Been enjoying this game a lot. I'm about like 21-ish hours in, not counting what I've done today on stream. Um, in gameplay, uh, I was on vacation last week and could play a little bit, but... A lot of my time was spent doing other things because I actually got married on that vacation, so I was busy. Um, but anyways, I I have actually set a new schedule and uh, and I have decided that I have just found a fun rotation of games I like to play. So I'm going to be doing Storybook Brawl on Mondays. I will be doing um, um, Legends of Runeterra on Wednesdays, and I will be doing uh, Pokemon Unite on Fridays. Um, also, if you have a fun pun for, like, a Monday title for this game, let me know, because it's the only one I don't have a title for, because I did uh, I did Runeterra Wednesdays, and then I'm doing Feeder Fridays, but I don't have a, a fun title for my storybook brawl that goes with Monday at this time. So right now, uh, what I'm looking for is monsters um, that are evil, which tend to be most monsters. There are a couple good monsters in the game. Uh, Hercules is a very powerful quest unit because his quest is he deals 100 damage. His default stats are 20-20, which means unless he is hit by things that are ranged, his worst case scenario is basically in five rounds, I, I complete my quest. Uh, the drawback to that is, is that um, sometimes by the time you have access to him because he's a level 6, 
it's going to be much too long to get him leveled if it takes a full five rounds. But if you look at how much people are still, uh, how many players are still in the game and a couple of them still have health, uh, I don't mind swapping into him. And at this point, uh, the Brave Princess is actually feeling like it's not going to be an easy thing to get online. So we're going to pull them from the board and we're also going to currently pull this from the board even though the court wizards just became a lot worse um pigomorph is one of the most devastating spells in the game because it transforms an enemy minion into a 10 10 pig of note that does turn off that minion's effects so um you can take away some very important units from your opponent um important resummonings all kinds of crazy things Great for us is Hercules just got a hit in, and he did not die. So, there we go. That's about half his progress right there. This book, by the way, um, I didn't state it, but it cast a random spell. And the spell it cast um, just gave minus 12, minus 12 to their unit, which was already positioned to lose the round, but got a little bit better for us. So actually, here's a I mentioned there is there is at least one good monsters. Gotta love bot boards, Kappa. Yeah, um bots often do not position well, but I appreciate there's a bot game to help people teach or uh, to help teach people how to play the game. Um I think one of the most intimidating things about auto battlers is um, there's a lot of information to take in, especially when you're learning the cards, and um, a timer is a lot of pressure. And some people just do not do well with timer pressure. And the fact that you can say, I can play bot games until I feel like I know the, the cards is a very good experience, in my opinion. Uh, we will definitely grab a Wretched Mummy. It is an evil monster. It is level 5, which is great for our pumpkin. And when it dies, it deals 4 damage to all of our enemy characters. <clears throat> uh, I'm considering using Feed the Kraken just to get the extra money, but uh, we'll keep our options open for a better spell. Yeah, cool. There's a Pigomorph there. I can also grab the Medusa, potentially. That's not a bad um, unit. Hmm. I'm going to grab the Pigomorph um, and kind of treat it like this is a real game. Of note, bots don't play amazingly well, and I probably don't actually need this, especially because of how far ahead I got on the bots. It's like the box are just programmed to buy whatever the last bot board had. Zero synergy. Yeah. No, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I don't I don't think they're coded for synergy. Or maybe it or may, it's possible that they're coded with a um with like a random difficulty setting. Um and I wouldn't even be surprised if if that were the case, if the if the random difficulty had a thing where like the range of hitting a smarter bot was um less likely than hitting a um a dumb bot because my intro game um one of the reasons i didn't know that it was a bot game besides the fact that i didn't know bot games existed was that um the final bot that was left actually had insane synergies and i barely won it uh even though i came in with actual um auto battler experience and know-how um and that came down to the fact that that one bot was very very well statted um but it could have been completely random. Maybe I just... Trees plus doors plus monsters. Yep, that bot couldn't make up his mind. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, and I don't know if I just... That was my luck playing itself up. And just I had the most unlucky play ever. Where the bot got everything random it needed to actually function as a bot. Um, or if that is, there is a chance of having an intelligent bot. But... Regardless, my first experience was surprisingly more challenging than you would expect for bots, but only because of that one specific player. Um, I annihilated every other bot in that game. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hercules did not level um, because of its stats being reduced. Hey, we're up to five viewers. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is actually a bot game. I was kind of going through a how to play. It should be over pretty soon, but if you have any questions, feel free to shout them out um, in chat, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. 
Uh, I will continue to explain my decisions as I play, but as I've stated before, making a little bit more greedy plays because I can get away with it in a bot game. <clears throat> the important thing here was that I was teaching people um, how the game functioned, and then I'll go back into a player player games momentarily. Um, also, just courtesy point out, this is kind of like the win con of dwarves. Um, doubly slash triply is also very important, but this card is the reason dwarves is quite playable, is if you have a battlefield full of dwarves, this is just this insane buff because it gives your dwarves plus two plus two for every dwarf that you have, so a full battlefield is getting plus 14 plus 14 when they are all dwarves, and you level this guy and his effect doubles, and it just gets disgusting, and um, doubly slash triply, which I mentioned a little bit earlier in the tutorial. Um, <clears throat> that also gets better boosts when it's doubly, it uh, gets double that, and when you have leveled it, it gets triple that, and it gets disgusting very fast. Um, and there is also another dwarf that buffs your dwarfs when it takes damage, and it's much, uh, or when it survives damage, it's much better at surviving damage when it has a million stat points from having a field of dwarfs. Uh, this is actually quite a strong spell, especially when you're in a build where you want something to die much later than everything else. Uh, what this does is it has uh, a crocodile swallow your unit and replace it with a 10-10, and that crocodile has last breath, summon whatever it kills. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, probably lock for this, because I've already cast a spell this turn, which in hindsight wasn't the best thing to grab, because this isn't super strong at this point in the game. Um... And once again, this is kind of a greedy decision to lock here, but I don't have anything else I need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, toss this for the extra money, and I'm going to kind of just clear the shop as much as I can to make it feel a lot a lot less bad that I'm freezing, because I'm going to mostly get a roll anyways. The only thing you're slightly sad about is Equid. It just fits into too many builds. Yes, uh, for anyone tuning in uh, either to the stream or to the, this Learn How to Play YouTube later on, uh, Echo Wood is a unit that hasn't popped up yet, but it is easily the, the number one um, probably going to be nerfed card or removed card, depending on how they decide to approach the thing in the game. Um, it has a special effect of... Anytime um, your units get buffed in combat, it gets those buffs as well. And um, there are many, many, many builds that can buff your units. Uh, and it just fits in everywhere, and it's insanely strong. And <clears throat> Like dwarves, for example, the, the dwarf thing I just described to you, um, I've had both a dwarf and a treant build where I included an Echo Wood, and my Echo Wood would have like 2,000 attack and 4,000 health, uh, and unless your opponent has a spell or effect that just makes it not be Echo Wood anymore, uh, it is unlikely they can do anything about it unless they also have an Echo Wood with similar scaling. So, we have level 6 items, uh, treasures, and as you can see, they have some pretty strong effects. This gives you plus 100 attack to the first unit you have in play. Um, it's always going to care about this first slot. So, of note is, um... For example, that baby bear I pointed out to you guys that keeps summoning things, it will summon things in that slot that it was um, dead in. So you can actually get that plus 100 attack over and over with things like the baby bear, or um, uh, or like the pumpkin can summon more things back into that slot. Um, but not the best thing for me necessarily. This one makes it to where your low level units have plus 15, plus 15. This is much better for some people than others. For example, uh, Peter Pants in this game has a special effect that he can't exceed level three, but uh, every time he would level, all the stuff gets boosted. This is an amazing treasure for him because it's a good end game scaling thing. I'm gonna take the Sinking Sword though because it doubles the attack of my entire front row, um, which is notably gonna be more than 100 attack and when I summon more stuff into my front row, that thing, those things will also be doubled. We're going to go ahead and we're going to level this up. This gives me the ability to, at the start of each brawl, give my lowest attack character plus 15, plus 15. Or when someone dies, all my other things fully heal. Or my front row has extra health and uh, my back row has extra attack. We're going to take the Tree of Life because that card is insane. 
Uh, we don't need the plus three, plus three scaling anymore. As you can see, the scaling kind of gets completely outpaced when you hit bigger stuff, but also we're probably winning this round. We're going to turn the pumpkin into the croc, like we mentioned we were going to do. Hercules is already leveled. Uh, his stat line's really good for us. We could just keep a leveled Hercules here, but I'm actually going to toss the Hercules and just throw another Wretched Meme in play, because it does get extra stats when it attacks, and, um... It is getting the boost in the front row anyway, and it will count towards my pumpkin summonings. But also notably, we're playing in spots, and even if this is too greedy, uh, doesn't matter. For the record, I think this is a little bit less greedy than normal, though. But Peter Pan getting a level 6 treasure is also quite a challenge. Kappa. That is true, and it it's also very, very, very difficult for uh, Peter Pan's to get a level 6 treasure. I think the only way for him to go about it, from what I have personally seen, would be to somehow obtain both treasures that give you treasure upgrades, but they'd have to, like, simultaneously get them, and I don't think there's a way of simultaneously getting them. Also, I didn't realize you earn in-game currency for bot games um, when you place. Maybe it's only for first, but either way, I didn't realize that was a thing. You can get a little bit of fairy dust grind on it. 